we've been sharing on the subject, the harvest is here. Is a season of harvest for us. That's what the Holy Ghost has been telling us. Uh, this month of, harvest, um, of August is just, you know, it's just like a trigger. But you know, when the Lord gives the word for the, for, for the month, it doesn't mean that after the month has passed, the word has expired. No word expires. It says that God just keeps giving us, you know, targets to, of things to believe him for. Now, Mark chapter 4, verse 26. Oh, okay, thank you. King James. Thank you, Lord. Now, this is the Lord Jesus teaching. He said, this is how the kingdom of God is. So is the kingdom of God. As if a man should cast seed into the ground. Now, take me to Colossians chapter 1, please. Because we're talking about this harvest. I want, I want to bring it into some kind of perspective and context. Um, we're talking about harvest now for believers who are part of God's kingdom. Now, Colossians chapter 1, verse 12. We need to realize that the moment we receive Jesus as Lord and Savior, we switch kingdoms and we switch allegiance. So, even though we're here on this earth breathing, spiritually speaking, we have switched kingdoms. So there's an authority governing your life now in Christ that was not governing it before. So even if, if, though we are in this world, we're not of the world. Now look at this. Giving thanks unto the Father, he has made us meet. One translation said he has qualified us to be partakers or to take our share of the inheritance of the saints in light. So you have a share. There's an inheritance you have. And that inheritance, apart from the reward you get when you, when you go into eternity, that inheritance has to do with what God has put you on this earth to do and called you to do. Now, everybody, in, every child of God on this earth has a call, has an assignment, has a placement, and there's provision for it. Are you here, somebody? And God's provisions are not just financial and material. God's provisions, let me just um, put it this way. God's provisions have to do with, number one, preservation in its, whole, in its entirety, preservation. It has to do with protection. It has to do with provision as well. So every resource that is required to sustain you on this earth until you fulfill your assignment is God's allocation to you. So it's like giving thanks unto the Father. He has made us meet. He has qualified us by the blood of Jesus to partake or to take our share of the inheritance of the saints in light. I love this because that means that Dunka Gomok has a share. You know, and uh, if I know that I have a share reserved for me by God, you know, Psalm 16 verses 5 and 6 said, the Lord is uh, my, my, the portion of my inheritance and of my cup. Um, the lines of, um, he maintains my lot and the lines have fallen upon me in pleasant places. I have a goodly heritage. Now, you see, once you know you have a share, this delivers you from envy, jealousy, and unhealthy competition. There's a share, there's a plot, there's a, there's a path with your name on it. And it has an allocation for you that no human being can tamper with. Now you need to understand, when you come into the kingdom of God, which is God's dominion, it is an unseen kingdom, but it is supervised by unseen resources. And Psalm 103 verse 19 said, the kingdom of God rules over all, rules over all. So it's the supervising authority over everything we see on the earth. So that means that once you get connected to the kingdom of God, there is an influence over your life that is superior to what's going on on this earth. Praise God. When I was, when Pastor B was, Pastor Bola was, you know, we're talking and he was, we're just recounting what happened. I remember that day I was, I, I was, man, I was, I didn't want to leave. You know, I was, I, was, I said, what is going on? I was just thanking God for the mercy of God. You know, that's a manifestation of God's economy. Preservation. Oh, hallelujah. There is, there is no earthly reason why Pastor Bola and Pastor Amy should be alive today. That thing, they should have just gone. But there was a preserving influence. My brother and sister in Christ, I need you to understand this. That you're in the kingdom of God. What you're experiencing now is not, has no right to determine the final outcome. If what you're going now is not pleasant or is, is contesting with anything in your life. So giving thanks unto the Father, he has made us meet, he has qualified us to partake of the inheritance of the saints in light. He has, he, has, he has qualified us by the blood of Jesus to take our share of that inheritance of the saints in light. Now let's, let's proceed please. Now look at this. Who has delivered us from the authority or power of darkness? He has delivered us. 
I say he has delivered us and he has translated us. It's a translation. I say it's a translation. You hop into a plane right now and you leave Nigeria and you go to the United Kingdom. All right? For whatever reason, I'm just giving an example. And you get into the United Kingdom. They check you in at immigrations. They look at your passport, they, they, they go through, you take your, they scan it, they make sure your visa is valid and all of that, and they have the, the right there if they think that there's anything going wrong, they have the right right there to just stop you from entering the country. Now, you enter that country, the, even though you are a citizen of Nigeria, right? You step into the United Kingdom for the time that you're there, you better be obedient to their laws. I don't care who you are. Because you've been translated. You're in a different place with different laws. It amazes me how it is when you get to Abuja or when you, Abuja Airport, or when you get to Muta Mohammed, MM, Muta Mohammed, all of a sudden you remember that you can throw trash on the ground. But the moment you step abroad, something tells you, don't throw trash here. There is something in there. There's all down there. But the moment you enter, but it's changing. I believe it's changing because we're praying. But the moment you enter, there's one disorder. You feel you can just take it, just throw it, just throw it away. <laughs> you see, there's, there's supervising authorities. Now, you have to live with the awareness of this fact. That you have been delivered from the authority of darkness. That's Satan's dominion and kingdom. And you have been translated into the kingdom of Jesus Christ. The dear son of his love. I think it's verse 14. Says, in whom we have redemption through his blood. Even the forgiveness of sins. Now let's go back to Mark 4. I wanted to make a point. That we're dealing with the kingdom of God here. We're dealing with harvest in the kingdom of God. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. And so the Lord Jesus says, so is the kingdom of God. This is how the kingdom of God operates. You want to have dominion on this earth? You want to enjoy the influences, supernatural influences of God to bear on your circumstances in this life? You want to enjoy God's preservations, provisions, um, protection, etc.? You must understand how the kingdom of God operates. He said, it is as if a man should cast seed in the ground. All right? Let's go ahead. And he should sleep and rise night and day. And the seed should spring up and grow. Spring and grow up. He knoweth not how. That's the supernatural element of it. No farmer can tell you how that seed he, they sow turns into a harvest. There's a God aspect to it. There's a miraculous aspect to it. There's, a, there's an aspect of it that has to do with God's faithfulness. It's a mystery of God kept to himself. How that a seed dies in the ground and then brings forth life. How that darkness comes out of, light comes out of darkness. How that life comes out of death is a mystery of God. So that's not our part to contemplate. It's our part to cooperate with it and to enjoy it. He knoweth not how. Let's go ahead, verse 28. For the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself. First the blade, then the ear. After that the full corn in the ear. Verse 29. But when the fruit is brought forth, immediately he putteth in the sickle because the harvest is come. The harvest is come. Now, Jeremiah chapter 5 verse 24. Glory to God. So we're dealing with harvest in the kingdom of God. And God has an agenda for this harvest. It's a season of harvest. Jeremiah 5 24. 5 24. Neither say they in their heart, let us now fear the Lord our God that giveth rain. Wow. God gives rain. Spiritual and natural rain. He's the one that gives it. Both the former and the latter. In his season. In his season. I was talking to one of our leaders, spiritual leaders in the southern part of the state. And they were saying that they need prayer because they have a lot of seed in the ground and rain just started and ceased. So a lot of the seed is dying in the ground. So I said, we're in faith with you that rain will come. But look at this. He giveth rain in his season. Now look at this. He reserveth unto us the appointed weeks of the harvest. He reserveth. Now, how do you know it's harvest time? In the natural, you can tell it's very easy. But in the spirit, in the kingdom of God, there has to be 
a signal of the Holy Ghost. That's why sometimes God raises ministry gifts. Sometimes you, to design your harvest, you have to have a signal in the spirit. So the Holy Ghost is telling us now, in the kingdom of God, is harvest time. Now you hear somebody. And the harvest is here. Now look at Luke 8, 11. God has reserved it. He has reserved it. Now what happens in the natural when it's time for harvest and a farmer does not go to take the fruit of their labor? They leave the harvest in the field and it rots. Isn't that right? In the natural, the harvest rots. But you know in the spirit, no harvest rots. No matter how long. That is why if you don't reap your harvest, are you here somebody? And your generation passes, another generation can come and reap that harvest. No harvest rots. Now, now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. So I, I like saying it this way. The seed of all seeds is the word of God. You see, what we're doing here, teaching and preaching, our authority is scripture. We, we can't just come up here. It's not going to work. You can't just come up here and just say anything out of your head. God's not going to confirm that. It's scripture that he confirms. The Lord went, went with them in Mark 16, 20, working with them, confirming the words they spoke with what? With signs following. So it's God's word believed that God's, that God's power confirms. So you, you, you can't just get a result by just, just doing whatever you want. <laughs> Can you hear somebody? You know, it may, look, it may look narrow, but that's the path of life. That's the path of life. You know, no matter how nice you want to be, no matter how nice you want to be about the gospel, the truth is that if you have not received Jesus as Lord and Savior, you're damned to hell. It doesn't sound nice, but it's the truth. You know, you can say with, with a smile, you know, <laughs> receive Jesus, please, because <laughs> if you don't receive Jesus, you're going to hell. It is still offensive. It takes the Holy Ghost to open men's hearts. To convict men. So the seed is the word of God. Is the word of God that we hear. Is the word of God that we believe. Is the word of God that's telling us. Are you here somebody? That we're in our harvest season. Now. Let me try and describe some of this. Some of the harvest. This is not a complete list. Let me try and describe some of the harvest. The first harvest. That we're looking at. Is a harvest of souls. Glory to God. Harvest of what? Or let me put it this way. People coming and becoming saved. That's the first harvest we're looking at. Let's look at Mark 8, 36 and 37. So when you say it's harvest time, it's time for the world to get to know Jesus. Are you here somebody? That's the first harvest we're looking at. As a matter of fact, we're going to see that all the other harvests God gives us, yes, he gives us to bless us, but his ultimate aim eventually is to use it to reap the world for Christ. So it's time for the world to be one like never before. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Praise the Lord. <laughs> man you may have a brand new car but uh, <laughs> if there's no peace it's just going to stay in your house that's if a mob doesn't come to your house God forbid so you see we need to understand some priorities in things many times and we need to understand that the body of Christ in this world is the guardian over this world we're the guardians oh. this is it oh. you look at yourself say this is it this is all God has oh. and he's made that investment in you or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Look at Luke 19.10, please. Luke 19.10. This is a fallout of Jesus' encounter with Lazarus. Luke 19.10. This is the reason the Son of Man has come. To seek and to save that which was lost. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Now let me just take you this way. Let's look at... Um, let's look at... Uh, Isaiah chapter 45 verse 22. Isaiah chapter 45 verse 22. Look unto me and be ye saved. All the ends of the earth. For I am God. There is none else. This is the ultimate aim 
of any kind of harvest we get. The harvest of souls. Amen? Everything in our lives ultimately is supposed to direct men to Jesus. Hello? Everything. Look unto me and be saved. All the ends of the earth. For I am God and there is none else. Hello? Isaiah 26 verse 1. Isaiah 26 verse 1. In that day, this is the day we're in. This is the day of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The day after Jesus has been raised from the dead. In that day shall this song be sung in the land of Judah. We have a strong city. Salvation will God appoint for walls and bulwarks. A wall and a bulwark is for defense. That means salvation is a defense for the nations. You see, that's why I was talking about sacred things. When you attack sacred things, you attack salvation. It's the only defense this world has. See, the only defense this church, this world has is the body of Christ. As imperfect as we are. In that day shall this song be sung in the land of Judah. We have a strong city, a strong city, salvation. If you go to the Hebrew there, the word salvation is straight. Yeshua. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeshua will God appoint for walls and bulwarks. Oh, hallelujah. And you know, I, I, it was interesting. I looked at it again. Yeshua, what it means in the Hebrew. Yeshua means welfare. Oh, glory to God. Or let me say it in contemporary Nigerian English. <laughs> Palliative. <laughs> Yeshua is our welfare. That means there's something in this anointing that will take care of us. Hello? In the, if you go look at the Strong's Concordance. Yeshua is our, it says welfare. It says deliverance. Oh dear Lord. Safety. Hello? Prosperity. Is there. So that means Jesus, the knowledge of Jesus will bring welfare, will bring prosperity, will bring protection, preservation, abundance. The knowledge of what he did for us on the cross. When the nations look to him, this is what we manifested. So guess what? God wants to use your life as a case study to the nations. Oh dear Lord. Wherever you are, God wants to manifest that. He wants people to evidently see that the reason for your well-being, welfare is Yeshua. He wants to exalt him above everything else. That's the number one harvest. Oh, hallelujah. Yeshua. We have a strong city. Glory to God. Hey, it's not time to be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. In this dark world, this dark world, God wants believers everywhere in their little localities, or where, not little, wherever they are placed. He wants, he wants it to be very evident that the reason for their preservation, protection, security, prosperity, success, welfare, well-being is Yeshua. He's salvation. The Savior. Glory to God. I said glory to God. So we have the person of Christ and then we have his principles or his laws. We marry those two things together. And we bring out a template for this world. God wants to show the world that he is the only hope of the world. He wants to demonstrate it in these last days. And there's no other place going to demonstrate it except through you and my life. Amen. That's why we can't be scorners. We can't joke around with spiritual things. There's nothing, in the, there's nothing in God's system that makes sense to the world. No. God's system is supposed to teach the world the wisdom of God and teach the world the way to go. Salvation will God appoint. Jesus, Yeshua, God will appoint for walls and bulwarks. So the first harvest we're looking at is the harvest of souls. And how do we get the harvest of souls? We preach the message. We preach the gospel. Are you here somebody? I said, are you here somebody? Jesus... Number one, delivers us from eternal damnation. Without him, you don't have a hope in the afterlife. But Jesus also will demonstrate himself in this life to show that he can take care of his people in the midst of the wickedness of this world. That's the second aspect of salvation. Somebody here? So souls. Number two, harvest. Signs, wonders, miracles. Testimonies, demonstrations of God's spirit, demonstrations of God's power. Look at 1 Corinthians, please, chapter 2. We're trying to put the harvest in context. Hallelujah. This is the harvest that is here. Amen. I say amen. We can't just come and be giving testimonies of new houses and new cars. And we're not winning souls. Something's wrong with that. Something's wrong with that. 
Because what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? So our priority must be right. Nothing wrong with the new car. Nothing wrong with the expansion of your business. Nothing wrong with you getting your breakthrough. Praise the Lord. But I tell you the truth, we have to prioritize souls. That's why we're here. Are you here, somebody? Look at this. Paul said, and I, brethren, when I came to you, I did not come with excellency of speech or of wisdom. Declaring unto you the testimony of God. He said, look at this in verse 2. Look at this. For I determined, Paul said, I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. He said, I made up my mind. Because you can tell all kinds of stories. But at the end of the day, you need the power of God. I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Now look at verse 3. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom. Hello, somebody. I said, hello, somebody. But in the demonstration of the spirit of God and of the power of God. So, it, you see, God's power must be at work amongst his people. My speech and my preaching was not enticing with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. Now look at this. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men. He did not say the wisdom of men is bad, but he said your faith shouldn't stand in it, but in the power of God. Oh, hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Your faith will stand in the power of God. There's a power of God for your prog progress. There's a power of God for your promotion. There's a power of God for your deliverance. There's a power of God for your finances. There's a power of God for your business. There's a power of God for your family. Are you here, somebody? Your faith standing the wisdom of God and it all emanates from Jesus. 1 Corinthians 1 24 says, He's the wisdom of God and He's the power of God. Glory to God. I said, Glory to God. Look at Acts 2 22. So we're talking about harvest. We're expecting that souls, people will be won into the kingdom of God and disciple. We're expecting also that the word of God will be confirmed in our lives with signs, wonders, and testimonies. Praise the Lord. I said, Praise the Lord. So let people keep mocking miracles. They're on their own. I believe in miracles. I believe in the supernatural. I believe in God's preservation. I believe in God's protection. I believe in God's supernatural provision. Glory to God forevermore. I believe that God still sends ravens to feed his people. Me, I believe it all. As crude as it is, whether ravens like people or raven raven. Whether the ravens are like people, because they say ravens are stingy birds. And we say, you know, in these days, stingy birds are like, God can even send stingy people to, to bless you. Or, or, or God can use very wicked people to open opportunity to you who have been known to sit on opportunity for other people. But even if it is the actual raven, me, I believe. That God can send a raven to my house with a bag full of a million dollars. And I'll take it and use it. I believe in raven ministry. Because it's what you believe that manifests in your life. Me, I believe. Oh, I believe this thing. Glory to God. I believe what the Holy Ghost said. I believe what the Holy Ghost said at the start of this year when we're waiting upon the Lord for that month of, um, what do you call it now? Our wisdom weeks. When the Lord said, the, the voice of lamentation and woe shall not be heard in your tabernacle. I believe that. That's the power of God. It's, it's, the, it's words spoken, words believed that trans transform to power. Are you here somebody? I believe that the harvest is here. And I believe that your harvest is coming to you. Glory to God. But let's, let's progress a bit. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you. By what? Miracles. And what? Wonders. And what? Signs. Which God did by him in the midst of you. A man, as you yourselves know, a man approved by God amongst you with miracles, signs, and wonders. Look at Acts 14.3. Glory to God. So in this season, expect a new order of victories. Because you are in the kingdom of God now. You're not ruled by the economies of man. Hey, hello? You're not ruled by the stock exchange of any country. Hello? <laughs> You're not ruled by the economy of any country. You are ruled by the kingdom of God. God will maneuver in the system to take care of you. Long time therefore abode they, speaking boldly in the Lord. They stood there for a long time, speaking the apostles, Paul I think and it was and Silas, speaking boldly in the Lord, which gave testimony unto the word of his grace and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. They stood there and spoke boldly.
boldly. The Lord is my healer. The Lord is my helper. Harvest is upon me. The Lord is my miracle worker. The Lord is my business partner. My business can't crash. He's going upwards and forwards. They stood there speaking boldly in the Lord. My children are taken care of. This wicked world will not swallow me and my father. They boldly declared the word of the Lord is spoken to be spoken. That's the way it is done. They boldly declared the word of the Lord. Are you here somebody? And look at what God, look at God's response. Which gave testimony. That's how testimonies come. By bold declaration of the word of the Lord. Stay there with God's word. Don't change. Keep saying what God said. Don't be looking for a new word every day. Every word can bring forth 30, 60, 100 and a thousand fold increase. Sit down with that word and declare, this is my season of harvest. You may not even know exactly what that means. Just keep declaring it. What is yours will come to you. I have it's not just physical thing. Life demands certain things that money and material things cannot answer to. The harvest is all encompassing. I say God wants to make his people a sign of wonder. His ultimate aim is in this darkness to push all people's eyes to Yeshua. For us to know that he is the only hope we have. Are you here somebody? Listen to me. It's the church that has the answer. It's the intercession of the church in Nigeria that's preserving Nigeria. I, nobody can convince me otherwise. It's the intercession of the church. We may not have been as consistent in, as, uh, in it, but we are in covenant with God. It's the intercession of the church. Glory to God. No head of state in Nigeria, especially Nigeria, knows what to do. If they tell you they know what to do, they're confused. They don't know. They don't know what to do. Nigeria is a very complex nation with a whole lot of issues and ancient devils that only intercession till Jesus comes can deal with. But God's people in Nigeria can subdue the system regardless of how the nation is going. You can prosper in your place because you have the principles of God's invisible kingdom and he rules over all. So don't wait for Nigeria to change completely before you expect to prosper. Don't wait for Nigeria to change completely before you expect to do what God has called you to do in this land. Long time, therefore, about the look. This, this is how to get these testimonies. You take the word of the Lord in your in your lips, and you keep declaring it. I hear somebody. They may laugh at you, but shortly they will laugh with you. Because what I'm seeing today is that you're going to be surrounded with things around about your life that only the power of God can account for. That's the testimony. Yes, you cooperated, you did your part, but if God did not bring the increase, we would be nowhere. Long time, my friends, my friends, don't just speak the word of God for two weeks and give up on it. Long time. I don't know what long time is. Old, but you know what? The Bible doesn't exaggerate. They stayed in that city. God sent them there. They faced so much opposition. God sent them there. They they, they stood in that place declaring the testimony of the Lord and look at what God happened. He responded by, to the word of his grace. He honored their long time stance of speaking his word and he granted. That means he opened another chapter. Something changed. Signs and wonders to be done by their hands. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. You know what other harvests we're expecting? I like this one. Money and material things. Deuteronomy 28. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Deuteronomy 28 verse 3. We need this to preach the gospel. Hello? Money and material things. Material assets. We need them to preach the gospel. Glory to God. Glory to God. Many of you here, your closets are already too full. Deuteronomy 28 verse 3. Blessed shalt thou be in the city. Blessed shalt thou be in the field. Say that's me. Look at verse 4. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body. Blessed shall be the fruit of your ground. Blessed shall be the fruit of your cattle. It's just talking about your assets. Blessed shall be the increase of your kind. It's your assets still. The flocks of thy sheep. That's what they had in those days. Blessed shall be your basket. 
Hello? That is, that is what God uses to feed you. And blessed shall be thy store. That means that you will have an overflow. See, that's me. I'm talking about harvest for seed sowers now. I'm getting there. For seed sowers. I said for seed sowers. Because if you sow nothing, nothing's multiplied. So if you're a seed sower, rejoice. Hello? And there are different kinds of seeds. I said there are different kinds of seeds. So I'm talking about the invisible kingdom of God. When you step into the kingdom of God, everything you do within that vicinity, as a child of God, listen to me, to bless humanity. <laughs> Hello? To bless humanity. To help the hurting. And to promote the expansion of God's kingdom is counted as a seed. And the operation of the seed in the kingdom of God is higher than just in the natural realm. If God will honor philanthropists, because God honors philanthropists, he does. Anything that reduces the burden on humanity, God honors. That's why many heathen are blessed. Because they tap into God's laws. Listen, God, anything that alleviates human suffering, God will bless. When you enter the kingdom of God, it's a superior operation now. Are you here somebody? Now, there's a harvest multiplied to you. Service in the kingdom of God. Investments in the kingdom of God. Intercessions of, in the kingdom of God. There are harvests that are due. And this is the hour. This is the season. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. You don't have a store. Except you need to keep something. If you operate a daily economy. Are you here somebody? And what you do is that all you have is to cook and eat for that day. Thank God for provision. But you don't need a store. A store is for excess. Blessed. Empowered to prosper. Shall be your basket, your provision, and thy store. So I command storehouses in this house in Jesus' name. For every seed sower. Now let's go ahead. Are you here somebody? God did not call us to serve him in vain. No. You're coming to God's house. You're serving God's house. You're being a blessing. You're, you're doing your bit in expanding the kingdom of God. Are you here somebody? And then you are also compassionate on needy humanity. Are you here somebody? Your harvest has come. Look at this. Look at this. Verse 8. The Lord shall command the blessing upon you, oh my, in your storehouses and in all that you set your hand upon to do. Say, that's me. That's God's hand upon your hand. That's a supernatural. And he shall bless thee in the land which thy God giveth thee. Hello? So if God planted you in Joss, you are blessed in Joss. God planted you in Joss, the world shall meet you in Joss. Oh my God, wherever God planted you, you will get the good in that land. There is good in the land God planted you. He told Isaac, don't leave this land. Don't go the way Abraham went. Don't leave this land. Don't leave this land in the day of famine. He wanted to go the way his father did and go to the land of the Philistines. He said, don't leave this land. Or to Egypt, don't leave this land. Dwell in this land. I'll bless you here. And Isaac sowed in that land of famine. And in the same year, he reaped a hundredfold. Listen, the blessing is where God planted you. The world will meet you where God planted you. You will go to the world from where God planted you. Oh, glory to God. See, I'm telling somebody here today, your labors in the kingdom of God have not gone unnoticed. Your harvest has arrived in the name of Jesus Christ. Watch out for amplifications. Watch out for enlargements. I know what the Holy Ghost told me this morning from yesterday. He said, and I know it's a word for the people of God. He said, listen, you are more than a conqueror. No matter what is going on in the system around you, your harvest is here. So I want to tell you, no matter lock down, lock up, lock in, lock out, you, your harvest is upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. Shall bless thee in the land thy God giveth thee. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Look at verse 11, please. So harvest of souls, 
harvest of signs, wonders, miracles, testimonies, demonstration of God's spirit, demonstration of God's power on your behalf. We've shown you how to get that. Take hold of the word of the Lord and boldly declare it. Harvest of money and material assets. That's where we're on now. 11. And the Lord shall make you plenteous in goods. Is that in your Bible? No, maybe you should tear it out of your Bible. Maybe you should tear it out of your Bible and give the woman making akara. To wrap her akara in it. Is it there? The Lord shall make. Who shall make? Who shall make? Of course, you do your part. But he's talking about the increase the Lord brings. That which you can do. Plenteous in goods in the fruit of your body and the fruit of your cattle. Glory to God. I said glory to God. And in the fruit of thy ground. I'm not saying you're going to have eight now. Eight children now. Just In the fruit of your ground. In the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give you. I'm, I'm, through, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get a cast a thought out of my mind. Now, the Lord shall open unto you his good treasure. The heaven to give the rain unto thy land in this season. Not just natural rain, but the anointing. And to bless all. Say bless all. 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 Do I have any Bible believers in this church this morning? Bless all. Bless all. Lift up those hands to heaven. No, don't stand up. Just lift up those hands to heaven. This is your hands. The work of your hands. Bless all. The work of your hands. Bless all. Bless all. Bless all. Bless all. The work of your hands. 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 Of your hands. Listen. Anything that seems to have been a setback because of this lockdown, I declare a double portion compensation to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Bless all. Say bless all. Say bless all. Say bless all. The work of thy hands find something to do. No lazy saints. Nothing is beneath you. Enjoy the dignity of labor. Start from where you are and watch God multiply it. Stop begging. Go and find something to do. He gives seed to the sower. If God gives seed to the sower, he will give work to the worker. If you humble yourself, you will find work. If you got to start sweeping, start sweeping, honey. Before you know what's happening, you will start employing sweepers. No lazy bones in the body of Christ. God gives seed to the sower. That means if you purpose in your heart to be a sower of seed, that was talking about financially, but if you purpose in your heart to be a sower of seed, he'll give it to you. So if you purpose in your heart to work, he'll make, give work to you. He'll bring work around you. Humble yourself and start from somewhere. Nobody rises by handouts. Nobody. We rise by putting the principles of God's kingdom to work. And God gives seed to the sower. He always gives starter seed to everybody. You've got to start from everywhere. We didn't jump up from this ministry. We started from somewhere. We started from available resources. We started from preaching to five people. Are you somebody? And with whatever facility we had. Glory to God. Then you see the forces of increase coming to you. So in this season, all the work of your hands are blessed. Any hindrance to, the, to your labor, any hindrance to the harvest on your labor is removed in the name of Jesus Christ. Bless all the work of your hands. Look, something's going to hit you this month. Something's going to hit you this week. Regardless of what is going down, regardless of how this security situation in our city and our state has, uh, and, and nation has shaken anything. I say your harvest has come and your harvest is now. And God is blessing all the work of your hands. And you shall lend unto many nations. Start from the nation in your community. Because God hides nations in men. He looked at Abraham and called him a nation. So start from somebody around you. Are you here somebody? Because the one that shares has instructed himself that there is no lack. So if all you have is a grain of rice divided into two. By the time you give half out, you have instructed yourself and instructed the economy around about you that there's no lack here. Because, only, because people in lack don't give. So it's not how much you give, it's from whence you're giving. So you break something, you break something, you bring momentum over your life because you instruct yourself. You're instructing everything around about you that there's no lack. You see, but you've got to be thoroughly 
thoroughly trained in God's word. If not, you will become a scorner. Don't join the scorners. Though. So all these men of God are doing and just asking people with their money. Not everybody is a fraud. Not every man of God is a charlatan. Are you here somebody? But you know, it would be very cruel of us to break out and not share how we broke out. Very cruel. You know, I told myself when we started ministry, I told myself when God started leading us on this path and God said I should go and, and, and restudy his laws of supernatural supply. If not, I'll not be able to be a success in the ministry has called me to be. I told the Lord. I said, Lord, I'm asking for one thing. I'm going to give myself to this thing. But I don't want to be a liability to any human being under heaven. I don't want to have a vibe when I come around anybody that they say, oh God, Dunka Gongok has come again. Hi! No, I, I, I don't want to be. So, I start from where I am and I allow God to progress me. Are you somebody? And within every season of my life, God takes care of me. I don't want to have this vibe that when I'm around somebody, I have a vibe that, oh no, the pastor has come again. Oh no, Dunka Gonka has come again. Hi, 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 I cringe at that. But there, it's there in the scripture. There are laws in the scripture. And you can grow and you can increase. Are you here somebody? I said, are you here somebody? So that's money and material assets. The fourth harvest, answered prayer. John 16, 23, answered prayer. It's a season of answered prayer. Long awaited answers to prayer have arrived. Long awaited. John 16, 23. And in that day you shall ask me nothing. Jesus is talking about the day after he resurrects, after he has paid the price for our, our redemption. Verily I say unto you, whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Are you here somebody? Verse 24. And hitherto have you asked nothing in my name. You shall ask that you shall receive that your joy may be full. Now look at John 15. John 15. John 15. So is a harvest of a season, is a season of answered prayer. So long awaited answers to prayer are coming into manifestation. Long awaited. Long awaited. Long awaited. I said, 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 long awaited. John 15. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Verse 7. Thank you. Verse 7. Now look at this. You attach this one to the other scripture I read. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you. Hello? You shall ask what you will, and shall be done unto you. Now what if, what if every single person here, let me just give a hypothetical situation. What if every single person listening to me here today, ask God to make them the president of Nigeria. Would that prayer be answered? Yes. What God cannot do does not exist. <laughs> Think before you answer me. Can that prayer be answered? Everybody here becomes the president of Nigeria. Wait, are all of you going to be president for one day? <laughs> what I'm trying to say, to tell you here, is that when God's word abides in you, it purifies your heart. Are you somebody? And he leads you to pray in line with his perfect will for your life. Not any kind of prayer. Oh God, give me 10 million oil wells in Nigeria. We don't have 10 million oil wells. So you see, there's some kind of thing that's vanity. When God's word enters your heart, it begins to direct you towards your portion. And some desires begin to rise up in your heart that is your portion. So not every place is your place. Not everything is your thing. Not every good thing per se is yours. They're in the realm of good things, your own day there. Just like not every human being, not every woman is a man's wife. Not every man is a woman's husband. Are you here somebody? So yes, what God cannot do does not exist. There's no doubt about that. I believe that with the whole of my heart. I truly believe it. Praise the Lord. But when you come into some of these dimensions, when it comes to some specifics, you must exegete it. With the word of God. Because if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. 
It may be God's will for you to go in and out of certain countries of this earth, but it may not be God's will for you to be resident there. That may not be God's perfect plan for you. You all may just be doing in and out. You can eat the good of the land, but you don't have to be resident there. So you see, when it comes to individuals and specifics, when you allow God's word to abide in you, it purifies your desires and it begins to prompt you towards your portion. You know, you have an affinity for certain things more than other things. You have an affinity for certain places more than other places. In the realm of entrepreneurship, you have an affinity for certain things than other things. Not every aspect of entrepreneurship is your place. So if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will. That what you will is God steering your heart into his will. Are you here somebody? And then it shall be done for you. May you will not be disappointed in prayer. Are you here somebody? Glory to God. I said glory to God. All right, number five. Long awaited harvests on seeds sown. Glory to God. Long awaited harvest of seeds sown. Financial seeds, material seeds, seeds of faithfulness, seeds of service, seeds of ministry, compassion, kindness, generosity. The harvest is here. The harvest has come. Glory to God forevermore. I'll read Luke 6, 36. Hello. Praise God. The harvest is here. Say with me, the harvest is here. Be therefore merciful as your father is merciful. You know mercy is a seed. 37. Judge not and you shall not be judged. Hello? Judging people. You know it's a seed. Condemning people. You know it's a seed. And you shall not be condemned. Watch it. When you assume or infer that nothing good can come out of somebody. Watch it. Forgive and you shall be forgiven. Forgiveness is a seed. Oh, it comes to the harvest, come back to you bountifully. 38. Give and it shall be given unto you. We use this for finances and that's right. But the context of this is mercy. Hello? Condemnation, judgment. It shall be given back to you. Good measure, press down, shake. Oh, I want mercy. Oh, I want an abundance of mercy. Now, mercy does not mean that we, 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 we excuse people's shortcomings. It simply means we don't condemn them. We give an allowance. Bible says, if any one of you be overtaken with the fall, Galatians 6, 1, ye which are spiritual, you restore them, bearing in mind that there's a possibility that you also, outside of the mercy of God, can fall into that same place. So give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure you meet or hand out, <laughs> The same way you hand it out. You know, the same way you give people a piece of your mind. I, mean, I, mean, I, don't, I, I don't take that. I just give them a piece of my mind. Most of those people cannot have anybody's piece of mind given to them. Most of those people don't have capacity to listen. No, no, no you know me, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a straight shooter. I, I, mean, you know, I, don't, I don't have time for nonsense. I just, I, I just say them straight. I give him a piece of my mind. Most of those people cannot take a piece of anybody's mind. They have low, if not zero tolerance. So the way you hand it out, that's the way it will be. Shake them together. Eh? I don't want that one. I don't want that one for, for judgment. Shake them together. Run you over. Shall men administer to your bosom? Anyway, Galatians 6, 6. Galatians 6, 6. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teaches in all things. Verse 7, verse 7. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, the same shall he reap. This does not only work for bad things. Though, because typically, you know what they tell us for bad things. Hmm? What you know? What you are saying, you reap it all. It's not only for bad things, sir. Huh? Is for good things as well. But you know what the Holy Ghost told us last week? That in this season, in the economy of God, because of the shed blood of Jesus, with the economy of God's mercy and grace, he has put a chokehold on bad seed sown when men come with a repentant heart. Are you here somebody? And he will not allow bad seed sown to grow up to a harvest to overwhelm you. Glory to God. Verse 9, verse 9, verse 9. Then we do the last one. Verse 9. 
let us not be weary in well doing. Oh, don't be weary. I said, don't be weary. Joseph kept interpreting dreams. He kept using his gift. Even when he seemed like one step forward, ten steps backward, he kept using his gift. Praise the Lord. And everywhere they threw him, he rose to the top until he eventually rose to the topmost top in Egypt. Don't be weary in well-doing. Don't be weary in sowing good seeds. Praise the name of the Lord. I heard a statement some time ago that really blessed me. God did not say you reap where you sow. He said you reap what you sow. So don't stop giving up because your seed is your, is your dominion. Don't, don't ever allow people's bad response to stop you from giving out good seeds. Because their bad response doesn't control your harvest. It's your seed that controls your harvest. So don't, don't stop sowing. Because of where, some where place where you're sowing, you seem to be disappointed. Because you're not sowing to get a harvest from them. You're sowing to get a harvest from the Lord. Are you here somebody? Knowing this, Ephesians 6, that any good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. Let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we will reap if we faint not. I say, no fainting days for you in the name of Jesus Christ. In your season of harvest, thou shalt not faint in the name of Jesus Christ. Now look at the last one now. <laughs> okay, let's read it. The elder likes it. Let's read it. Let's read it. I was going to go up because of time, but let's read it anyway. 10. This is a good one. As we therefore have opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who have the household of faith. I know, I don't think if I say this, it's going to distort the scripture. If you don't have opportunity, create it. I don't think it will distort the scripture, will it? Because some people say, okay, I didn't have opportunity. No, if you are mindful of it, you will have opportunity. That means that you should be, you should, your eyes should be looking for saints that you can bless. You create the opportunity. That's how to get ahead. You, you, you be mindful of it from the place, from every stage of your life. You can be a blessing to somebody. Put it in your mind. If you are mindful of it, you will find opportunity. That's how to get ahead. Now finally, harvest of long awaited prophecy. The fulfillment of long-awaited prophecy. Ezekiel 12. Glory to God. And I'm about done now. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Ezekiel 12 verse 21. So when we say the harvest is here, this is what we're talking about. In a nutshell. It's not an exhausted leaf, but it's kind of a broad one. Long-awaited manifestations of fulfillment of prophecy. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. You know, there's some things that the Lord has put in our heart to do. And I've been discussing with, you know, Pastor Eli, our family, in terms of sowing and some of and how we want to be investors in God's kingdom. And we've just been proving it out in the area of seed sowing. So I already shared the testimony when I was coming to my 40th birthday and the Lord, you know, dealt with me and all that. And supernaturally provided the seed. My dream my dream, one of my bucket list dreams is to sow one billion naira into the kingdom of God. So when it happens, this is what I'm going to tell you. I will tell you. You know why? You know why? Because it does not take a whole army of saints to change a nation. The people here, more than enough, if you have a heart, God put in your hand. You know, we need people, you see the way the world goes, we need people with, who will move the kingdom of God. <laughs> we, we, we need people, are you here somebody, who can, who can make news without making noise. We share our testimonies to inspire people. Because I know what I'm talking about. Some may or may not know my family history. Some people feel that I'm preaching the gospel because uh, Pazunka, anything he's doing, he, he, he's, he's just doing what he's doing because his family has money. Some people think that. That's why we share our testimonies. I'm telling you. So if these things are not said, some people will not say because uh, hey, Pazunka is doing ministry, can't you see? It's because he wants it. I mean, he just wants to. After all, he doesn't have a challenge. Listen. I'm doing ministry not because I want to. I get to. 
I get to do it. I get to do ministry. Every, the major blessings that have entered my life have entered through obeying God and ministry. That's why we share some things. Not because of anything. But I'm, I want to challenge them because see, it doesn't, once you have a heart, God will put it in your hands. You see, let's move the kingdom of God. Let's move this kingdom. That's what I'm sharing to. Are there people that will trap with me here? Are there people that want to be big givers into the kingdom of God? I didn't say give to Pastor Zunkau. I said give to the kingdom of God. Can we move this thing? Are you here somebody? Can we move the kingdom of God? Are you here somebody? It's, it's a small thing. There are people here that can come to church with 10 buses. That either you charter or that you buy. It's, when it's in your heart, God will put it in your hand. Do you know something? Water cannot pass through a pipe. And leave the pipe dry. It has never been. So God's people need to catch. That's why I started. Well, I didn't know I would go this way. But you see, people, the devil is moving on people to attack sacred things. Most of the people that are attacking it have no heart for the kingdom of God. They're not living for Jesus. They're not winning souls. They're not discipling. They're just attacking men of God. Are you somebody? Okay. I don't even want to go to the dimension of men of God that are attacking men of God. Just leave that one alone. That one's just satanic. But you see, there is a job to be done. There is a kingdom to be promoted. We can't be sitting down on petty issues. <laughs> and the main thing is not being done. Now the word of the Lord came unto me saying, I don't know if this message blessed you, but this is the one in my eyes. You know, you see, you see, you want you want God's hand to multiply upon your upon what you what you should pray for is for God to give you a heart for the kingdom of God. That's the way to go up. You can't you can't partner with God's kingdom and come down, but you need a personal revelation of these things so that scorners will not confuse you. People just talking nonsense on social media. 21. Have I read verse 21? And the word of the Lord came unto me saying. 22. Son of man, what is that proverb that you have in the land of Israel? Saying the days are prolonged and every vision faileth. Harvest of prophecy being fulfilled. Tell them therefore, and I'm telling you today in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm reading this scripture under the unction of God's spirit and I'm telling you today in the name of Jesus Christ. Tell them I will make this proverb to cease. And they shall no more use it as a proverb in the land and say unto them, the days are at hand. Glory to God. And the effect of every vision. Oh, glory to God. You know what the Lord told me? Oh, I was almost in tears. He said, I, 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 sh I showed you and told you that in the next decade of ministry here, that there's, I'm going to put 100 years worth of fruit inside of 10 years. Every year will represent 10 years of harvest and fruit. And I'm giving you this prophetic seed. I'm putting your hand to connect you to this. And it has taken you 16 years to migrate from the 1 million nine seed to the 10 million nine seed. The next seed you're going to sow that's in your heart, groundbreaking, you will do it in six months. That's acceleration, honey. That's acceleration, brother. When you put your heart on doing things for the kingdom of God is not about us. I hear somebody. It's not about us. It's not about going on social media and just showing, hey, this is my brand new car. Hey, this is my Range Rover. I talk about Range Rover a lot, but let me tell you the truth. I can live without it. If you know me, you know me. I talk about it. If I get it, I drive it. If I don't, or if I get it and I feel I need money for a gospel, highest bidder, man. And if you can't give me a seed, if you can't bless me with something because you feel Pasdunka will give it out, keep it. If God tells me to give it out, it is gone before I blink my eye. And the effect of every vision. <laughs> For there shall be no more any vain vision, no flattering divination within the house of Israel. Look at this. For I am the Lord, I will speak, and the word that I shall speak shall come to pass. It shall no more be prolonged. I said, I am the Lord. I will speak and the word that I shall speak shall come to pass. It shall no more be prolonged for in your days, O house, you're not rebellious. I will I say the word and I will perform it. 
in your days, in this hour, I declare the harvest has come upon you in the name of Jesus. Everything God has shown you, this is the time for it to be fulfilled. It may seem to have been far away, long time coming. This is the hour. This is the day for it to be fulfilled. Can I tell you, in the days of the fulfillment of vision, God will give you instructions, prophetic instructions. It's time to step out. It's time to obey God. It's time to cast away fear and step out. When you step out, jot down will overflow his banks. God will part the sea for you. In your days. And I say today is that day. Oh, the Lord, the word of the Lord say, I will say the word and I'll perform it. My goodness. I say my goodness. Some of you in the next six months, you're going to take one step and God's going to give you the effect of 10 steps. Some others, you're going to take one step. God's going to give you the effect of 100 steps. A few others here, you take one step. God will give you the effect of 1,000 steps. For these are the days of the fulfillment of vision. You know what it's for? You know what it's for? Ultimately, it's so that the nation's eyes will be turned to Yeshua. He said, I and the, and the children the Lord has given unto me there for signs and wonders. It is so that people look at your life and then use it. And, and then from your life, let them look up to the God that you look up to. Ultimately, it's for salvation. Are you here, somebody? How long are we going to be here? Even if you stay one twenty years. The day you go, I'm looking at my mom now. Oh my God. Pastor Bola keeps telling me, my friend keeps telling me, enjoy your mom. I look at my mom now. I see, she, she, God is helping her, but I see that the muscle mass is reducing. I see aging. And I'm asking myself, boy, it's a strong woman, man. My dad died. She was, my dad was killed at 36 or so. She refused to remarry at 36. Beautiful woman. I watched my dad's friends making passes at her and she would push them off. I watched her live a consecrated life. Strong woman. I, I, see, I see the way that she used to, she used to aim her skulls at my head. Intercontinental ballistic missiles. God will just help me. I'll catch you there. I'll power to break something. I said, oh my God, is this my mother? Did this woman give birth to me? Strong woman. I'm seeing her like now like a baby. I'm telling myself, you just have a certain time to live in this life. Do God's will. Do God's will. I believe in blessing. I believe in breakthrough. But all of these things have a purpose. Let's not, get, let's not become like the world. Though. I believe in the blessing of God. I believe in a good life. I believe in good things. But ultimately, my brother, my sister, if we're not fulfilling God's dream, we're wasting our time here. So this fulfillment of prophecy. Are you here, somebody? God will give you a husband so you can serve God with him. He'll give you a wife so you can serve God together. He'll give you godly seed so you can fulfill the lineage of prophecy in your family. Let every blessing you desire adopt God's kingdom now. That's the difference here. I said, that's the difference here. You see, some people are sworn in ignorance. Their eyes are blinded. They are sworn to the death to do the devil's will. You must have believers who are sworn to the death to do God's will. But I've discovered this. When Esther says, if I perish, I perish. Most people that say, if I perish, I perish, don't end up perishing. Because God needs those kind of people alive to lead his troops. So most things that you are willing to give up, God gives you back many times more. Because your willingness to give up anything means God can trust you with it. It won't become an idol in your life. That's how to become massive in the kingdom of God. So I'm in agreement. Before, before this year ends, there are going to be some people here who are listening to me now. You don't have a thousand night to your name. But before this year ends, you'll give your first million to the gospel. Yeah. Some of you, before this year ends, you'll give your first 10 million to the gospel. Yeah. Some of you, before this year ends, you'll give your first 100 million to the gospel. Yeah. Some of you, before this year ends, you'll give your first 1 billion to the gospel. Yeah. Some of you here, God is going to raise you up to build international franchises. And the only reason for those businesses is to finance God's kingdom. See, this is the kind of mindset I'm looking for. You can't be like that and God will not take care of you. How much will you eat? How many can you wear? I was getting up this morning, I was just asking myself, I said, I think I'm going to just beg the church. Because some of this, because sometimes I'm just, it's a burden sometimes to fix my tie. Look at them, I just have the ties there. Old fashioned, new fashion. I give them out. Many of you, you have 
what you have, in your, you're looking for a new shoe. And I don't, I don't mind you having a new shoe, but the shoes you already have. The clothes you already have. See, I believe in the blessing of God, but don't enter idolatry. Are you a somebody? You're releasing your faith for breakthrough. Release your faith and bring souls to church now. Lift up your hands to heaven. All the work of your hands. No, no, I've not finished. I, Ezekiel, yeah. I am the Lord, I'll speak, and the word that I speak shall come to pass. It shall no more be prolonged. In your days will I say the word and will perform it. Let's continue. And the word of the Lord came to me saying, Hallelujah. Son of man, behold, they of Covenant Word Christian Center that I shall say, the vision that he seeth is for many days to come. And he prophesieth of times that are far off. But between now and the end of this year, son of man, behold, they say that the vision he seeth is for many days to come and he prophesying of things that are far off. Let's continue verse 28. Therefore say unto them, so I did tell you now. Therefore say unto them, and I'm saying it in the name of Jesus Christ. There shall none of my words, the word of the Lord over your life, there shall none be prolonged anymore in the name of Jesus Christ. The harvest is here. The harvest is now. Your harvest has come upon you and your harvest has changed your life forever in the name of Jesus Christ. But the word which I have spoken shall be done, saith the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. This month, anything that did not seem like it was working, let it begin to work now. What the Lord has shown you, enter into it in the name of Jesus Christ. If your heart is for the kingdom of God, there will be no end to the flow of the favor of God in your life. If God knows that he advances you like this, you are putting the kingdom of God with you, there will be no end to the flow of favor in your life. There will be no end. There will be no end. The word which I have spoken shall be done, saith the Lord. Lift up those hands and thank him. Oh, bahala kaseya. Linka tora balaboro sakataya. Ninka so katara balaka tora balikista fradaya. Oh, we declare the blessing of the Lord upon all the work of your hands. Regardless of how situations unfold in our city, you are blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare that the portion and the harvest that the Lord has reserved for you, you walk in it in this hour in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord, who is the Lord of the harvest, instructs your heart, guides you, leads you by unconscious and conscious leadings of his spirit. You have the right place at the right time to meet up with the opportunities that God has for you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God supernaturally directs you into your already prepared harvest fields in the name of Jesus. And you are reaping with rejoicing and you are reaping and there's multiplied testimony and rejoicing in your home in the name of Jesus. I declare for you a new order of testimonies. A new order of victories. I say that it is harvest season for you and you are reaping your harvest in the name of Jesus Christ. And you shall not be ashamed. You shall not be disappointed. And the voice of lamentation and woe shall not be heard in your tabernacle. Regardless of the instability of our times, the harvest, your harvest, is here and is upon you in the precious name of Jesus. This will be a testimony filled week for you. Every day will be a harvest day. A testimony day. A rejoicing day. You will continually come back and rejoice with testimonies in your hand. Father, I thank you. Be blessed this week. Enjoy the preservations of the Lord this week. Prosper this week. Enjoy the great provisions of heaven this week. Enjoy enlightenment from heaven. Concerning your portion and your place in the name of Jesus. Your feet are ordered by the Lord. You are preserved. You are delivered from all evil and harm. You continually rejoice and come back to God's house as the Lord gives us opportunity with testimonies in your hands. Glory to God. Give the Lord a shout of praise.